Kathy Will, we're um, so thrilled to have you with us today as representatives of two of the largest tourism boards in the US. Um, through our daily skiff coverage, as well as a series of surveys we do, we've really been covering the growth of global tourism, as well as the stagnation of American travel habits. We actually just did a survey that showed 50% of Americans have yet to take a vacation day um, in 2014, and it's already October. Uh, let's start by talking about what the U.S. can be doing to spur tourism internationally and domestically. Um, Kathy, could you maybe start by talking about some of the lessons you've learned at Las Vegas that could be enacted on a countrywide level to spur tourism? Yeah, I think when you look at tourism in general, uh, people want to feel like they're welcome. They want to feel like they're invited to come and that the experience when they arrive and depart is something that they're going to remember in a good way and not a bad way. And so from the U.S. perspective, if you look at what Brand USA is doing, um, who's fairly new, it's an opportunity to welcome the world um, in a way that can be safe and secure, but it can also be friendly and welcoming. And so it's giving that invitation out there to come and then following it up with an experience that when you come through the borders, you're not feeling like um, you did something wrong before you even arrived. Oh, interesting. And, and what about you? Is there anything that Visit Florida has been doing that could be enacted on a country level, maybe through Brand USA? Well, I think, first of all, it's an extraordinary time to be in the travel and tourism business for everybody in this room. When you look at what's happening around the, around the states, around the, around the entire country, I mean, we're seeing record visitation. Um, it's, uh, it's an extraordinary time, and we're seeing great growth, yet there's a tremendous amount of head, headroom. I mean, we look at what Brand USA has been able to accomplish in just a couple of short years of promoting the, the United States uh, as a global destination. Um, we've just seen uh, great opportunities for market share. And I, and I think, again, when we, when we look at from Visit Florida's perspective, I mean, the domestic marketplace, again, is growing and thriving, and people are traveling again. But as you mentioned, uh, you know, people are, not, people are not taking all their vacation time. There's a huge opportunity, the MasterCard TV spot, hopefully they'll show that about take your vacation. And the, the Travel Effect initiative that's happening at U.S. Travel, trying to get people to take that one extra day off, has huge upsides for everybody in the travel business, but has upsides for a lot of other businesses as well. I mean, Home Depot and, and a lot of other places. So I think we're going to see that bandwidth wagon of you've earned your vacation, take your vacation, and that's a real good upside. And then again, internationally, uh, we're going to see, we had visitors from 189 countries in Florida last year. Um, the, the market potential globally is, is, is extraordinary. So, and I think Kathy and I were talking earlier, it's the first time that um, we really see alignment of the travel industry. You've got a, a president that now has for the first time fully articulated a strategy to grow tourism as the, as the number one export for the country. And that's a huge opportunity. We have states now recognizing the economic impact of tourism and destinations locally that are really investing in tourism. And you're starting to see a real big partnership mentality. So I think the, the upside for all, everybody in this room is uh, extraordinarily positive. Do you think that we can be doing more to spur tourism though from an international perspective? I think we can always do more, right? So it's that conversation that we had earlier regarding JetBlue and that balance between the business traveler and the leisure traveler. So for Vegas, many times the first time someone will come to the destination is for a trade show or a conference or a meeting, and then they'll come back again uh, on leisure visitation. And so that leisure segment is really important to us. Um, but what's important is that you have a balance of air lift and service into the uh, destination, and that's true for any destination, that you're going to have drive markets and you're going to have fly markets and it's important to make sure that you have access. Okay, well, let's talk about um, repeat visitation because as you pointed out, there, tourism is doing well right now and it's continuing to grow and both Las Vegas and, and Florida are some of the most well-known destinations. So travelers often have a sense of, of a place before they arrive and 85 to 95 percent of the visitors in each of your destinations were repeat visitors in 2013. What do you do to um, keep the, the image of a destination fresh in order to attract these repeat visitors, as well as a new generation of millennial travelers? Kathy, maybe you want to start? Um, when we look at what does Las Vegas have to offer, we have 150,000 hotel rooms in the destination. And it's important for us to be communicating the fact that there's something for everyone. Um, you know, sometimes people think they know what Vegas is, and they'll equate it to just gaming. And what's interesting is that our resort partners actually make more money on everything other than gaming, shopping, dining, spas. They'll make more money on than actual gaming. Less than 50% of our visitors um, gamble. So from a destination perspective, it's really important that we're talking about what we have to offer and what we have to offer all types of segments. And then with the millennials in particular, it's making sure that it's authentic, it's real, it's an experience that they want to curate and have um, the experience that they want and not one somebody thinks they should have. And so for us, it's really pressing out that message of it can be whatever you want it to be and here's how you can approach the destination. 
That's interesting. And well, what about you? How do you keep the image of Florida fresh so people keep coming back and again and again? Well, 95% of the visitors to the state of Florida will, will have been there before. So that's, uh, you can look at that as a real a challenge or you look at it as a real opportunity. And I think when we say that uh, over this year we'll have probably 98 million visitors uh, come to the state, that, that's 98 million advocates that are going to go home and brag about different places around the state. And that's, and that's really where our marketing focus has shifted. Uh, it's not, not as, as proud as I am of the marketing that we do at Visit Florida. Um, that's not, there's nothing more powerful than, than the advice of friends and relatives, and those 98 million advocates are, are really the direction that we're going in terms of our, our marketing issues. Um, that said, we're, uh, as a state, we're projected to have 127 million visitors in 2020. And so in order to do that, we have to start to get people you know, out of the, the traditional. There's only so many people you can get in the Keys in January. There's only so many people that are going to go to Walt Disney World in, uh, in, over the holidays. So it's, it's, again, expanding and broadening what people think of when they think of Florida. And we really started an issue a couple years ago um, we're celebrating the, you know, the first international visitor to the United States was Juan Ponce de Leon, and he, he landed in, in Florida. And so, how do we how do we start to ch shift the way people are thinking about the state and get and, and targeting millennials? Because um, you know the baby boomers are great; they're going to continue to come, but millennials want to make sure that they're not going to their grandparents, you know, where their grandparents went to retire. They're going someplace that is vibrant, alive, and exciting. And so, uh, again, I think storytelling has a, a huge role in that. And we, we talk more about the storytelling piece, but um, that's a that's a huge opportunity to get again and get people off the beaten path. You brought up something I think is interesting about kind of getting the visitors to become advocates for the destination. What are, what are you doing or what do you think other tourism destinations can be doing to get visitors to share their experiences once they're already in a destination? Well, I think, uh, I think Kathy and her team have done a re remarkable branding job. I mean, outside of 1977 with the I Love New York, there's, there's no more iconic tourism brand than and uh, you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. At, at Florida, we took a very different approach. It's you know what happens in Florida stays with you forever, right? And so, uh, how do we get people to share those experiences? And and that is ultimately in, in this age that all the conversations we're talking about the co confluence of technology and experience. That, and and that is ultimately the most powerful. Again, the most powerful tourism you know inspiration is going to be advice of friends and relatives. So how do we encourage that? How do we how do we enable people to start to share the, the message in any destination? big or small, you know, you have built-in advocates, people that have exceptional experiences, and it's arming our employees with the, the ability to, you know, get them to share that. We started a campaign last year called uh, just hashtag love FL, and it's over the course of, you know, less than a year, we've had 500 million, you know, impressions of people hashtagging that, 200,000 pieces of content just being shared by people that, that are in the state. And again, I think that's the, the that's the long term, this, the, 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 is connecting, not necessarily our marketing, but con con connecting happy, you know, satisfied guests with their friends and family, and they'll, they'll do the job for us. Interesting, and, and I'm happy you brought up what happens here stays here, because that's become one of the most iconic taglines of tourism, and it's just become a part of our pop culture, and it's launched 10 years ago now. Would you mind telling everybody, I think it'd be interesting to share a little bit about the history of the tagline and kind of its growth and evolution? Yeah, I think what's most interesting when you look back at the history of what happens here stays here is when we changed to that tagline, there was a lot of pushback. Um, if you think back 10, 11 years ago, what you were seeing in tourism ads were hotels and the conference space and the um, room in which you were going to be staying. You weren't seeing um, people as much doing their own thing. You were really seeing the product. And so when we moved to What Happens Here Stays Here, it was all about the emotional connection and the ability for people to imagine themselves um, in the destination without showing you know, the strip and, and all the hotel marquees. And so that was a heavy lift for, you know, the people that came before me. Mm -hmm. um, my boss um, was the one that was the head of marketing when that tagline was formed and developed and launched. And he tells this great story about how they went to the hotel CEOs and said, okay, here's our new campaign. And they were like, are you crazy? Because you're not showing one hotel marquee. And so for us, it was really a bold start. And what's interesting about what happens here stays here is it really took off when the um, National Football League said that they wouldn't air our ad. <laughs> so, um, and it wasn't about the ad itself, it was about Vegas, the brand. Um, and so they sent a very nice rejection letter that was um, when social media really wasn't around. And so we took the very nice rejection letter and then we sent it out to every media outlet in the country and said the, the NFL won't let you see our ad. Um, and we got more play off that ad and it really was a way to launch the campaign in a way that was relevant. <clears throat> we continue to test it to see if it works. You know, it's important that you don't just rest on your laurels and decide, boy, that was great, and we're just going to hold on to it forever. And so we continue to test and make sure it works. And it continues to work because we never talk about what the what happens here stays here moment is for the visitor because it's for them to determine. 
And that moment may be staying up all night and partying in a nightclub or a day club. It may also be the seven course meal at Joel Robichon. So it's going to be whatever experience the visitor wants and that's why that tag has power. Interesting. And, and you're both such strong leaders in digital marketing today. And you, know, you have sponsored content on popular websites, you have strong video and written content on your own websites, but there's a lot of destinations in the audience today that are still developing their strategies. And I think something that a lot of people struggle with is kind of how to measure the impact or the, um, how, how well they did with these campaigns. Have you figured out an ROI to kind of measure the success of either content marketing or social media initiatives? It's really about the discussion. I think um, goes back to what Will said earlier. It's allowing people to engage with the brand in a way that they want to engage, and then amplify the conversation and the discussion. And so for us, you know, we obviously have measures. You know, how many click-throughs and you know how many people engaged with any specific thing. But we just launched, for example, um, a whole Geo Vegas opportunity for people to go onto the website. We did it with Google where you can walk through different opportunities and there's different itineraries because some people approach Vegas and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much to do that they don't know what to do or where to start. It's an opportunity for us to engage that consumer in a way that they want to be engaged while we're educating them as well. And the ROI on the backside of that is the conversation that then happens um, in our social media areas. And so it's looking at how do you amplify that and then just measuring that amplification. And at the end of the day, visitor numbers will prove out. We're, we're talking earlier, we're both up you know, visitation's up, um, and so as you count and you continue to see people come to the destination, you know that you've been successful. And, and Will, you've um, had an interesting thing going on at Visit Florida where you have, um, you hired the senior editor from a major newspaper, you have 100 content producers. What advice would you have for other destinations that are looking to either create um, some more of their own original content or start new marketing campaigns? What advice would you have? Well, I, it kind of goes back to the, the earlier presentation of being all about me. You know, you're creating storytelling, I think really f making a baseline of telling stories across whatever platform that is, if it's social, if it's its own content, if it's shared content, um, but getting those stories out. And I, I, I do think that probably Visit Florida Today is producing more professional grade quality con travel content about the state of Florida than any travel publication in the country. Um, and, and if it is professionally generated, it's, it's fantastic stuff. But um, just telling the story from a from an outsider's point of view, um, not necessarily telling it from a destination's point of view is is the co compelling, really important stuff, uh, and that and that can be done. You know, Visit Florida. We're fortunate to have Emerald Lagasse do a television show on you know Emeralds, Florida. It can be done on a big scale, but it can be done. You know, the bloggers and the and you know independent professional travel writers, photographers, photo essay folks. Um, but it's getting one creating that content from the consumer's point of view, giving them some sort of inspiration, and then it's getting it and sharing it. I mean, I think a, a great example that I heard uh, at our governor's conference last week is we did a really cool article on Jackie Robinson and his tie to Florida. Uh, it was a video, and that video lived on visitflorida.com, probably had a thousand, you know, a thousand views. Went up on YouTube, had a couple hundred thousand views. Got syndicated through our network of, you know, newspapers and, and digital sites, and you know, it's up in the hundreds of thousands of views. So it's not only owning the content, but it's sharing it and enabling other people to, to take it and own it, and you know, they may make the money off the ad sale, but you're getting a, a compelling story out in the marketplace. You know what's really interesting about content is that from a brand perspective, you have to just decide you don't own it, right? So our visitors own the brand, and they're going to message about the brand in a way that's relevant to them, and so for us, it's harnessing those people to amplify the voice and to really have a wider discussion, but as soon as you decide that you can't own all the social media content, that you just have to to let it go, there's great things you can do. So kind of letting go of the reins. Yeah, when you try to control it, you, you just, it's not authentic and it's contrived and people can see it. Yeah, to that point, I think we have a program called Share a Little Sunshine, which is activating Floridians to, to brag a little bit about their the favorite things around the state of Florida. And we, we've had over 220,000 folks put up individual pieces of content to that site. Then we were able to, you know, take that stuff, put it up onto visitflorida.com and everywhere else. But you, you imagine the power of harnessing and getting other people to share what they love about your destination, be it a a state like Florida, a city like, like Las Vegas, or any place in between. Let's go back to um, the on the ground experience. So when tourists, their, their demands and their expectations are changing, and I think Shree talked about it earlier, how people want these local and insider experiences when they go somewhere. They want to connect with the local culture. They want to feel like they're having a special experience that might be exclusive, that's not open to everybody. How does this, um, how does this impact you as destinations? How are you adapting to these new uh, visitor demands? Is it something that you're introducing new events for? Is it, I don't know. I think it's allowing people to curate their own trip and to decide what they want to do and what they want to see. So providing 
some educational base so that people know what there is to choose. Mm -hmm. And then they can decide, okay, how do they wanna plug into that? Whether it's, um, for example, coming to Vegas and then taking a helicopter tour to the Grand Canyon for an afternoon and then coming back and you know, doing some other activities. It's picking and choosing the pieces of the destination that they wanna experience um, and allowing them to do it in a way that's really easy and pretty transparent. And so it's that challenge of putting it out there and allowing people to pick and choose, um, but having enough information that they feel like they're making choices. What we found, we do, everything we do is based off research. And one of the things that we found, especially coming out of the recession, was that people were willing to travel, they had money to travel, but at the end of the day, they wanna know if they spend the money and they take the trip and they take their vacation days, to your point, which people hoard for whatever reason, if they, take those vacation days and spend the money, it was worth it. Right. You know, there's nothing worse than feeling like, oh my God, I just spent all this time and money and, and my trip wasn't worth it. And that's so how do you help want. them? How do you help them make it's sure that it's worth it? Making sure they have enough educational pieces and parts that they can put the trip together in a way that's important to them. Okay. Yeah, I think when you think about our industry, and we've heard so much about the technology side of it, but the most important, the most important component of travel is the people. And in Florida, we've got 1.1 million people that are employed in the hospitality industry. How do we get, how do you engage those folks? And one, create the value of a tourism job. And uh, it's, it's remarkable when you look around the, the industry and see that, you know, all, how, where we all started. And, you know, people that are running Ritz Carlton's that started off in, you know, in the laundry room at a, at a hotel. People that's, you know, are now running incredible organizations. But we started in the hospitality business. And I think really elevating the role of hospitality industry employees and recognizing all the work that they do, because every amazing experience that, a visitor has in any destination is starting with a person. It's the advice of people. I think the opportunity is social media starts to take off and the digital kind of connections that we're talking about is, is really harnessing the power of our employees to provide those recommendations. And I think the one thing that is probably missing in our business is trying to, you know, us tell you what's great. Uh, it's, it's how do we connect that to the employees and the residents to help them be your brand, brand advocates. And, and that's one piece that I think is a, a real opportunity for any business, any tourism destination is really starting to recognize, reward employees for being your brand advocates and rewarding. And, and I think there's a huge upside there. Interesting. And have you seen um, more tourists coming to your destination and instead of doing a group tour, they're booking it on their own and then using their smartphone kind of as a travel guide. This is something that we see because there's so many apps and there's so many ways that somebody can just book their trip on their own. Have you seen that in the destination at all? People going towards more of this independent travel where they're curating their experiences on their own based, based on the information you provide? Yeah, I think you see a little bit of everything. When we look at our visitor base, um, last year we had almost 40 million visitors in Las Vegas. This year we'll break the 40 million mark for sure. Um, and when you look at what that is, you know, it's half baby boomers, it's half millennials, and then Gen X um, kind of wedged there in the middle. And so that visitor group is experiencing the destination differently. Mm -hmm. And so the important thing from our perspective is to make sure we have some of everything um, in regards to how you plan your trip and how you execute your trip. Because, you know, my mother, for example, is, she, she doesn't have a smartphone, she has a flip phone. Um, so she's never gonna try to open her hotel door with her phone. And so it's making sure that we have both ends of the spectrum covered. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways we can do that. It's just recognizing who your visitors are. And in increasingly, as you're starting to see the success of Brand USA and, and the explosive growth in international travel, you, you, it's, a, it's a real challenge to make sure that, again, we're educating our industry partners that you know, you're gonna have some, you know, some retirees coming down that don't have a smartphone, have no interest in that. Mm -hmm. Um, or the, certainly not in terms of unlocking their door, but you have people coming in from you know 187 different countries that are, have different customs and things like that. So I think the, that's a, a real opportunity in terms of inter continued international growth, but it's gonna be a real challenge for the industry to make sure that we're capable of servicing and providing extraordinary experiences to you know, multiple generations and multiple cultures. Great, um, now we're gonna see, I think we have some questions from the audience. I have a question, so. Um, <laughs> I know that's a surprise, right? Um, so, a lot of people here from the um, tourism industry that are here, um, we have on Skift covered a lot about the future of organizations like yours, DMOs and CVBs. Um, as brands in travel industry, whether hotel brands, startups coming into the sector, why should we care about DMOs, CVBs? Are they, do you think they're still playing a role as the intermediary in bringing all the people together? As a consumer, on the other end, do I, sh should I even care about you? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, what a, what a destination CVB or, you know, offers a visitor is a platform 
Um, and so we have hotels that are large and small. And so what our responsibility is, is to create a platform that they can't otherwise create themselves. And so you can stay everywhere from, you know, the Wynn Encore to Circus Circus and um, everywhere in between. And so what we offer and what we bring to the party is really an opportunity to have that level playing field where voices can be heard. We can compete with a Florida um, in a way that a single entity can't on their own. And that's what we bring with a whole lot of other, you know, pieces and parts to that. But the big understanding is who are our visitors? You know, who are the people that are coming? It's that national reach. It's talking about, we talked, we started with um, things that matter most in tourism, big picture. If people can't get into the United States, then, you know, forget international visitation. And so our hotel partners, unless they're parts of large chains, they don't have that voice to say, wait a minute, if you enact this or that, if you restrict travel, it's going to hurt us all. And that's what we as a destination can bring. Yeah, destination marketing companies, I think, have, uh, are undergoing a tremendous amount of change. And so a destination marketing company that is uh, truly creating and adding value for the industry itself, creating a platform that allows them to do something that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. And I think you see the destination marketing companies that are being successful are those that are really adding those la layers that, again, an individual business could do by themselves. There's no surprise that you know, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld are partners with Visit Florida, but we've got 12,000 other partners. And I think doing programs, again, something like we did with Google, when we walked, the, there's 825 miles of beaches in Florida, 740 are accessible to all of us. And we walked every mile with a Google Street View cam, and now that's up on the website. Uh, it's up on Google Maps, and 25 million people have watched it in the last two months, or, or virtually walked our beaches. When you're creating kind of programs that truly add value along those lines, um, you're going to see destination marketing uh, organizations thrive. Uh, if you're not and you're trying to be all things to all people and, and, and just kind of do general umbrella branding, you're not going to be nearly successful. Just a quick follow-up question. Uh, you mentioned brand, brand USA, and this is just between us, so nobody will tweet it. Um, <laughs> what do you, do you really think they've done a good job? Yeah, I'm, uh, I guess I, I would be the bi most biased person because uh, the guy that's leading Brand USA, Chris Thompson, is my former boss and a close friend and a good colleague. And I, I'm, I like to be, on, the bus. be on the kitchen, kitchen cabinet there. Uh, extraordinary opportunity, I think. You know, you start to build a destination marketing company for the country, representing 50 states and all the territories. Uh, it's a massive job. Um, in terms of, you know, they, they started and, and kind of were slow out of the gate. I think what you're seeing them do is, is take uh, the marketing principles that we had at Visit Florida and many other places that are successful um, and apply that to the national level. And I think you can see extraordinary things of them adding value, allowing us to do, as a destination, do things that we otherwise wouldn't do. And I'm probably, and, and Kathy, I think at Vegas as well, are probably the people that have the most to gain and the most to lose by Brand USA's success in that 20 cents on every dollar that's spent by an international visitor spent in Florida. Now they're promoting Wyoming and, and destinations that, other, you know, that would never be able to do that on their own. Um, so I see their success. Hopefully we'll be one of their biggest partners um, this, this next year. And I think that uh, over the course of after we get reauthorized, which I would ask everybody in this room to reach out to your senator, ask him to reauthorize Brand USA, because uh, if we don't, that's $100 million or $200 million that's going to be lost. Uh, and not be spent marketing the destination. And then I can tell you, at, at any level, t destination marketing works, and it's working at Brand USA. What do you think? Yeah, I think when you look at what Brand USA has done, what we are seeing from a destination perspective at this point is they're able to expand our dollar. So they have a, a number of programs that are co op in nature where they put funds in and we put funds in, and it just allows us to extend our buy. It allows us to, um, we have 12 international rep offices that help us sell. Las Vegas as an international destination um, and a place where people want to go. And what the Brand USA programs do is add another layer to that and you know, offer us an opportunity to really um, extend our, our media buys and extend our message. So I think from that perspective, it's working. I think it, it took a little time to get off the ground, as you'd expect, if you're just going to plunk down a group and say, OK, go sell the US. Well, how do you do that? Um, and so I think it took a little while to get that off the ground. But I think they're headed in the right direction, for sure. All right, thank you. We're out of time, I think, right? Yep. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.